Hello everyone, and welcome to this AstroPy tutorial. My name is Micah, and in this video, we will be going over star detection using the photutils.detection package for Python. In the last video, we covered setting up a Jupyter Notebook coding environment, and we used AstroPy and matplotlib to extract raw space telescope data and create this image here. If you're new to handling FITS images, and especially if you're new to Python coding in general, I highly recommend you go watch that video first if you haven't already. PhotUtils.detection is an extension of AstroPy, and it includes a tool called DAO Starfinder, which we will use to automatically detect bright sources in our FITS image. As the name suggests, the DAO Starfinder is typically used to locate stars, but it can be used to detect other bright sources such as quasars. However, for this tutorial, we'll just stick to finding stars. Now, before we can begin coding, we're going to need to open up the PhotUtils package. So go ahead and open up a terminal. And in the terminal, type pip install PhotUtils, and then in brackets, all. So that's going to go ahead and install the PhotUtils package as well as all of the dependent packages. So when that's done, we can go ahead and go back to our Jupyter Notebook. And if you see here, we have the image that we created in the last video. And if you remember, we called it section one. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna find the mean, median, and standard deviation of, of section one. So from astropy.stats, we're going to import sigma underscore clip underscore stats. And then we're going to set our mean, median, and STD for standard deviation equal to sigma clipped stats, and then in parentheses, section one, our image name, and we're gonna set the sigma equal to 3.0. So let's print those to make sure that we get what we want. Print mean, median, STD. Great, so we have that our mean is 1.6487273, our median is 0, 0.0, and our standard deviation is 8.310026. So the next thing we're gonna do is import the DIO Starfinder tool. So from photutils.detection, import DIO Starfinder. Then we're gonna create a variable called DIO find, and we're gonna set that equal to DAO Starfinder FWHM, and that stands for full width half maximum. We're going to set that equal to 3.0. And our threshold, we're going to set equal to 5.0 times the standard deviation. So this tells the DAO Starfinder that we want to find all stars that have a full width half maximum of about 3 pixels and that are at least 5 sigma above the background level. So next we're going to create a table called sources. So we'll set sources equal to DAO find section one minus our medium. And then we're going to format that table real quick. So for column in sources dot call names, if column not in id and picks sources column info dot format equals percent dot to f and so that's just going to make our table look a little bit nicer it's going to prevent margin overruns and such so then we'll do sources.pprint, don't forget that there are two p's right there, max width equals 76. All right, so now we have this table that shows all of the stars in that image. And you see it goes, it, it assigns them an arbitrary ID. So we go from one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 419. So it detected 419 stars in this little section of sky right here and it gives us the coordinate positions in, uh, in that image. So we have the x, the x pixels and the y pixels, 
and then we have all this information on each of those stars. So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually make some sense of this by displaying um, apertures around each of those stars in our image. So we're going to create uh, this image basically, we're going to recreate this image, but we're going to have it draw an aperture or a circle around each of the stars that it finds. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and create a new block of code. And then we're going to need to import NumPy. So if you don't already have NumPy installed on your machine, uh, you can do that from the terminal. Just do pip install NumPy. So import NumPy as np, and then import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt, and from matplotlib dot colors. And you'll notice that. A lot of this is going to look very familiar from our last video, but import log norm. And finally, from foututils dot aperture, import circular aperture. So those are all the tools we're going to need to import. So next, we're going to define some variables. We're going to set positions equal to mp dot transpose sources X centroid and sources Y centroid. So now we just created variable positions that has all of the X values and Y values from our table here. So then what we're going to do is we're going to set apertures equal to circular aperture positions and we're going to set a radius of five so that means the circles are going to have a radius of five pixels uh, you can make that larger or smaller if you want but I'm going to go ahead and set that to five and then we'll type plt dot in show section one We'll set our C map equal to grays, and our origin is going to be lower. We'll set norm equal to log norm, and don't forget those open close parentheses after log more norm, and interpolation equals nearest. And then finally, we're going to actually draw those apertures. So type apertures dot plot color equals and I'm going to set my apertures to blue you can set them to whatever color you want as long as uh, as long as the color here is recognized by uh, the apertures dictionary set it equal to blue and we'll set line width LW equals I'm going to set mine to 1.5 again you can make that larger or smaller depending on your preference and we'll set the alpha or the opacity to 0 0.5 and so that just means that we'll be able to kind of see through our circles, um, just in case we need to see something in the background. And then go ahead and put a semicolon at the end of that. So we'll run this, and this might take a little while. Oh, only two seconds, great. Okay, so here we have our same image, right here, but we have circles around all the point sources. So you might notice a problem here. We have these really bright stars that have tons of little stars around them and if you see all of these apertures are getting jumbled up and mixed with each other and, and if we're trying to create a chart based on uh, our star data these might throw off our uh, values a little bit this might um, skew our chart in a way that we don't want so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over creating a mask and what masks do is they will take out a section of our image that we don't want the star finder to go over. So we're gonna try and block out all of these bright sources that are just too bright and are probably going to mess with our uh, data. So what you're gonna do first is set mask equals np dot zeros section one dot shape comma d type equals b o o l for boolean all right so this is the tricky part um, this is where you're going to have to figure out using the x and y coordinates 
of where you want your masks to start. So I already figured out the coordinates of these stars and where to mask them, but for you this might take some trial and error. And just remember that your Y values will actually come before your X values. So set mask, and I'm gonna do 260 colon to 320. So uh, remember I said Y values come first, so that's going to mask from our Y pixels 260 to 320, and then from our X pixels 40 to 80, and then set that equal to true. And I'm gonna do this for a few other stars. Okay, so if you see here, I created these four masks that will mask out these areas of the sky. And when we uh, print this again, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's redefine our sources table. Sources is equal to DAO find section one minus median, and then comma mask equals mask. We'll set xpix equals sources x centroid. ypix equals sources y centroid. Then positions equals np dot transpose xpix and ypix. And then our apertures are going to equal circular aperture positions with a radius again of 5.0. PLT.mshow section 1 cmap equals grays norm equals log norm, open close parentheses, origin equals lower, and interpolation equals nearest. And then finally, again, we're gonna plot our apertures, dot plot, color equals blue, line width equals 1.5 and alpha equals 0 0.5 and semicolon. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and so we see here, the difference between these two images is that we have these super bright regions just blocked off. So it's not finding the stars around there and then we can just work with these stars here. All right, well, that about wraps up what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, there are a few other tools included in the photutils.detection package, and you can discover those for yourself by going to the photutils website, and I'll include a link to that in the description. Um, but yeah, basically, this is the data here. We found all the star positions that we'll actually use in the next video when we go over performing aperture photometry. And we were able to create the images, which will be useful if you're creating a poster for a conference. Um, but yeah, if you need additional help, uh, I'll include a link to my GitHub repository where you can find the example code and you can use that to help you in your own project. But until then, I'll see you in the next video.